Welcome uh, to the second uh, part of the webinar series on vendor and contract lifecycle management in NetSuite. Uh, here we're going to talk about how you can manage contracts within NetSuite itself without needing any third party contract management tool. Uh, in this uh, demo, we're going to look at what the contract dashboard is going to look like and how it uh, makes it so easy to use contracts in NetSuite. <clears throat> We will look at some dashboard alerts uh, related to contract expiry. So you are made aware if a contract is uh, going to expire in 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days. Um, you can also look at a high level view of contract usage from the dashboard itself. Uh, this will give you information on the name of the contract, how much uh, amount is used, uh, what is the balance, and uh, also you can see some of the KPIs on the total uh, contract amount being used in the system um, and so and so forth. Uh, the contract record itself uh, we will look at uh, during the demo uh, which allows you to uh, do multiple uh, functions such as uh, uh, attach a parent contract to a given uh, contract, have a parent-child relationship. Um, if you have budgets that you're using in NetSuite or integrated into NetSuite such as NetSuite planning and budgeting then you can pick your budgets from within uh, the contract record and make sure that you have the budget available uh, before you could create the contract. Uh, you can also see the uh, contract amounts used and uh, how much is remaining or available for future uh, uh, transactions, uh, which is uh, a function that's not available for in any of the third party contract management tool since it, uh, this is integrated into the ERP, you can see that information. In addition, uh, which is another great uh, feature because the contract record is within the ERP, is you can see all the transactions that have been created and conducted against that uh, contract uh, and see all that information on a single page and make quick decisions. Uh, you'll also be able to create milestone based payments from within the contract, accruals, um, you can attach uh, contract documents and even see how you can link to uh, redlining documents in here. Uh, also, you have the ability to move the contract to an approval routing process uh, so that it can start with the user into department heads or legal and uh, whatever the, that uh, process may be. And finally, you will see how the contract is being enforced on a purchase order uh, so that you don't have to go back and correct issues after the fact. You can catch uh, and make sure that the purchases are within the terms of the contract upfront. Uh, that being said, we are going to now move into NetSuite for a demo. So I'm in uh, NetSuite here and uh, I'm going to go into my vendor management tab, which manages all my vendor and contract uh, uh, lifecycle here. Uh, right from the dashboard, uh, I can see that there are a few contracts that are coming up for expiry. I can click on these and can, it'll take me right to the contracts that's expiring and I can address it. Uh, from here, I have some other information. I can see some of the KPIs of the contract status and value, contracts used on purchase orders. So of my total contracts that are outstanding, I am using 2.2 million already on uh, purchases. Uh, from here, there are a few other KPIs uh, that may be of interest to you. All this is completely customizable and we can pick the metrics that you want to uh, look at. From here, this is the high level uh, contract view. You can see uh, a given contract or what program it's under, or what the contract value is. If there is a budget available, what was the budget? Uh, how much was uh, used on the purchases? Um, what bills, vendor bills were created against, and if there are any credits, it'll show that too. So it gives you all this information uh, at a glance. Now let's uh, go ahead and create a new contract record and see what that would look like. So here I'm in a new contract record. Uh, in my previous session, I created a new vendor uh, under called Acme Inc. And I'm going to pick that uh, vendor here and you can see all that information that was captured via the vendor onboarding is now flowing through 
into the contract record or any other record. If I created a purchase order or a bill, it would flow through there as well. So you do not have to duplicate uh, data entry once it's done. Uh, from here, uh, I have the ability to pick the right subsidiary, the currency. Uh, I, gi I can give a, these, this contract a name. Say this is the very first contract. So it's an MSA that uh, we want to sign with them. Um, from here, I can pick the type of contract it would be. Uh, um, and uh, from here, you also have the ability on what action, end date action you want to pick once the contract comes for expiry. Uh, this is especially useful for SOWs. Uh, so you can pick whether it's an auto renewed, uh, whether it will, you will let it expire. Or if you have canceled this contract midstream, you can uh, set it to a, a status of cancel. Uh, the contract owner, so you could also create contracts on behalf of some other owner who, do not, who does not have access to NetSuite. Uh, and you can pick uh, who those business owners are and uh, uh, route so that the approval routing would work accordingly. In addition, you have the ability to mark whether it's an HCP related contract whether it's a GXP regulated vendor that you need to do something with, or if there are data privacy uh, uh, issues that you need to handle. And depending on this, you can route it, route the contract uh, uh, accordingly and may also want to include your legal in the approval routing process. Uh, and you can do that. Here is where you can select a parent-child relationship, but since this is a brand new contract, there isn't a parent contract to be uh, attached. I can pick my department. Uh, I can uh, uh, pick a department head, uh, which can also come in handy for approval routing. Uh, from here, I can pick the program if there is a budget available. So uh, under the budgets, I'm going to pick a, a program here and automatically, uh, dynamically, it uh, pulls my budget information what the total amount is and how much is remaining. Um, from here, I can also include a uh, contracts uh, document itself. I can link here that is being redlined and the uh, contract usage information will be shown here. So I'm gonna switch over into a contract that is already created uh, so you can see what that would look like. Here is a contract we've uh, signed with Catalan. Um, and the information is uh, filled here. You can see that there is a parent uh, contract here and I can click on this and go look at the MSA. This contract is for the value of $150,000 uh, and uh, uh, starts in 2022 and expires in 2024. Um, this information is useful because when you are enforcing the contract on the PO, which it does automatically, it takes into account and prevents you from creating contracts for an expired uh, purchases for an expired contract. It would also look at the budget amount uh, available uh, for that, uh, uh, sorry, the total amount available uh, and enforce that as well. So here you can see that uh, we have, it shows you the budget amount that is also the redlining a component here. So if I click on this right here, it'll take me into the uh, uh, the document and I'm going to come back here. Uh, from here, you can see that there is already um, uh, certain transactions created. And here you can see that the, of the $150,000 of this contract value, about 50,000 is being used on the PO and about 30,000 of that is billed. So there might be some uh, POs that are not completely billed. There is some partial billing that has happened. In addition, you will see that there is also some uh, credits available. So the credits add back into the total available uh, amount that can be used against this contract which brings the total remaining balance to about $103,000 uh, still available to be spent uh, against this $150,000 contract. Uh, furthermore, you can see all those transactions down here. As new transactions happen, it will add it to this list and give you a single view of the entire contract 
along with the various metrics as well as the transactions that you can drill down to right from here and go to this PO and look at the details of it. In addition, uh, you have the ability to create contract milestones uh, that and assign an amount uh, to those milestones and also assign the completion dates. Um, you can also accrue uh, based on those uh, milestones. And as you can see, we have some accruals here. Uh, I will now go into a, a purchase order and try to create an enforcement against this contract. So let's move to a purchase order. I'm going to go to the, uh, the main dashboard. From here, I want to create a purchase order. Go ahead and pick the vendor we were working with, which is Catalent. So I'm going to pick Catalent. Uh, in NetSuite, you can also just type in and search for vendors. <clears throat> I need to pick a business owner uh, for my uh, use case here. From here, I can start typing in the contract or I can pick it from a list and only the contracts for the given vendor that's selected above, in this case Catalan, will show up. As we can see, there's many contracts here, but they are named. So I'm going to pick the latest uh, contract. As, as you can see, that as soon as I picked it, it gave me the start date and expiry date of the contract, along with what the total contract amount was and how much uh, uh, money is left on this contract to be used on this PO. So I cannot go above this amount or if the date was expired, it would enforce that as well. In addition, I want to draw some more attention that it brings in the status of the vendor, whether it's open for ordering or it's still pending approval by AP. So it tracks that as well. It, you cannot create a a PO for a vendor that has not been approved. So I'm going to go ahead and try to violate the terms of this contract. So the amount available is 103,000. I'm going to try and uh, create an, a, a, a PO for greater than that and see what happens. So I'm going to pick, uh, say, 610 as my account of professional services. And I'm going to go ahead and create $120,000 uh, you know, uh, professional services uh, uh, PO, okay, and put some memo here. I can also pick my department class location uh, that I need for my financial reporting. From here, I can add to it, and I'm going to try to go ahead and save uh, this PO and see what happens. So I'm going to click on save, and immediately it. Uh, the contract enforcement kicks in and says this is an amount mismatch uh, that the purchase order amount exceeds the contract remaining amount. So I click OK and it keeps me in the PO so I'm not losing the work that I've already done. Okay, I can simply go ahead and uh, correct this. I said, oops, oh my bad, instead of 100, 102, I typed in 120. That was a mistake and I'm going to go ahead and save this and try to save it then and see what happens. And this time, once I click on save, it's uh, thinking that and it's processing this purchase order and it should come back with a purchase order number, which is 97 in this case. And from here, uh, it is going to put it in the status of pending approval. Now, as you can see, I do not see any approve or reject buttons because I'm not authorized. Uh, to do that, so the next uh, uh, person in chain in the approval chain is the one who's going to see this as a, an alert that appears on their dashboard in NetSuite to approve this PO. Uh, so hopefully this uh, uh, is helpful, and I'm going to go back to the contract. You can see uh, that the contract is listed here. I'm going to click on this link from within PO. Everything in NetSuite is linked together, so I can drive into one record from the other record as far as there's a hyperlink there. And here, if I scroll down, I will see that I have now used $152,000 uh, of my $153,000, and I only have 
one thousand dollars left for any future uh, uh, purchases um, and you can see that the new PO I'm going to move this around here uh, of 402 has appeared in my contract uh, list contract record and also shows that it is pending supervisory approval so it has not gone out yet it's pending <coughs> supervisory approval I'm going to go back to my dashboard here and I am going to uh, conclude uh, this session. Thank you very much for joining the uh, contract lifecycle management uh, in NetSuite.